Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can you share your honest reaction after seeing this bunch of berries and green leaves? I guess not. But can I can guess uh, what would be your reaction? And your reaction would not be different from mine one when I took the photograph of this bunch of berries two years back. But neither you nor me want to share our honest reaction because uh, these grapes are not sour and we don't want to be called foxes. So, uh, but on the other hand, I would like uh, that you guys uh, note your reaction as a pathologist, not as a consumer. So, the next slide, uh, if you uh, see the leaf of the grape, uh, you immediately notice that there are necrotic brown spots on the leaves. And uh, this uh, plant is uh, seems to be infected by some kind of pathogen which uh, already established in it and now disturbing its physiology. So this disturbed physiology now progress and now it start affecting the gene. So we in these three slides saw two different kind of uh, plant. One is uh, fresh, healthy and the other where the symptom of disease are appearing and uh, not only appearing but also affecting the yield. So we can draw two conclusions. Uh, one conclusion is that the grapes uh, bunch in first picture as well as leaves are healthy and resistant. And the second conclusion is that the leaves and the bunch of berries in second and third picture seems to be affected by some kind of pathogen. I totally agree with your uh, second opinion and partially agree with your first conclusion. <clears throat> if you say healthy, it's perfect. But if you insist that these uh, grapes plants are resistant, I am little bit skeptical. Why we shouldn't use the resistant word despite the plant seems healthy. If we are laymen, then there is no harm uh, by saying that this plant is healthy and resistant. But as a student of plant protection, uh, our verdict should be it might be resistant or it might not be resistant. Why we are so much careful? Because we think that probably plant escaped the disease and it is not actually resistant. Uh, there are a couple of reasons why this plant uh, escaped but we all know that escape in any uh, walk of life is just is part of problem is not the part of solution and ultimately problem confront you. This is probably uh, because uh, we uh, plant protection professionals, whether pathologists and the entomologists are little bit different from the other professionals in the agriculture science, in agriculture sciences like horticulturist, agronomist, soil scientist. Uh, unlike them, uh, we 
not judge the plants just uh, on their appearance because we know that appearance uh, are sometimes dubious. So our careful uh, worded would be that these healthy plants probably apparently resistant. So question might be arises how apparently resistant is different from the rest of the forms of resistance. So first uh, we uh, like to define what is the apparent resistance. Apparent resistance is a kind of resistance which is shown by susceptible host against a virulent pathogen due to the absence of favorable environment. So uh, we all know and uh, we are quite uh, familiar with disease triangle since our uh, introductory courses. So when we say favorable environment, it means the environment which promote the disease. But uh, I can give you an example to understand this uh, more. Uh, just take the two uh, phytopathogenic bacteria. One is Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas attack the plant when the plant growing at a low temperature and at a high humidity. And if these two conditions not met, Pseudomonas not able to cause disease even in a susceptible host. On the other hand, there is another phytobacteria which is known as Ralustonia. This attack the plant when uh, the temperature is high and the, there is dryness. If uh, the environmental condition change and the temperature become low and uh, soil has enough amount of water, the bacteria Ralustonia fail to cause the disease in the susceptible host. However, uh, this is not a kind of resistance uh, we should uh, emphasize. Why? Because uh, sooner than later, the environmental condition become favorable and uh, once they become favorable, plant is always vulnerable against the virulent pathogen. So unlike us, uh, mean human or animal, plant can't run away from the favorable uh, from the in from their environment because they are sessile so we always look for a pathogen for a plant which is truly resistant but when the plant is truly resistant the plant is only truly resistant if it has a resistant gene and this gene help the plant not only to detect the pathogen but to kill it so from that we can easily infer that true resistance is a resistance which is uh, due to the presence of or or resistant gene and this this resistance is not affected by the environmental condition. If plant has a resistant gene, no matter uh, what kind of environment it is, it is growing, it resists the pathogen. So similarly, geographical area also not affect this resistance. If the tomato plant is resistant against Pseudomonas in Rawalpindi, then these, this plant remain resistant if even you grow in Gilgit Baltistan or Okada or Lahore or Mazafargar or even Australia or Canada. So why? Because it is genetically resistant. It is programmed to be resistant. So this is the reason why it is always emphasized that we should go for a variety which is truly resistant. But uh, you guys uh, 
might be might ask me a question how in the field we come to know that this healthy plant is apparently resistant or a truly resistant it is difficult but we can make uh, educated guess uh, for example if uh, there are three four varieties are growing in a in an orchard or in a field and out of four varieties three varieties are showing the disease symptoms it means that the pathogen uh, is in the orchard or in the field is virulent and the environmental conditions are conducive that is why it is causing the disease but there is a one variety uh, which is not showing the symptoms despite the virulent pathogen is present around and the environmental conditions are also suitable so we can say that uh, this variety probably not apparently but truly resistant but still uh, as a sign this is not a scientific approach scientifically uh, it uh, it can only be tested if we inoculate uh, the plant of such variety under the uh, favorable condition inoculate mean inoculate with the pathogen and still disease not developed you can easily say uh, that this is uh, because of the presence of or gene so i initially uh, told you that always go for the uh, true resistant and never compromise on the apparent resistance because apparent resistance sooner than later will break but sometimes uh, apparent resistance has uh, some practical applications we all know that it take five to six years to develop a resistant variety and if we don't have any resistant variety of a crop what we do we stop growing no so we can at this point of time we can use our knowledge about the apparent resistance and uh, apply it uh, in the field condition for example <clears throat> i told you that the ralestonia uh, attack when the temperature is high and the humidity or the water is low but if uh, we don't have any resistant variety against the ralestonia and only uh, we have no choice but to grow susceptible variety we can manipulate we can grow the plant earlier in the season so that uh, it avoid uh, the ralestonia attack and we can irrigate the field and uh, this uh, take away the dryness which like by the ralestonia so the basically i want to emphasize that the apparent resistance has practical application and uh, must uh, must be understood uh, if we want to practically control plant disease when the when the choices are limited uh, again uh, but the take home message uh, from this discussion is that never compromise on the uh, uh, true resistance apparent resistance is good uh, but <clears throat> your ultimate goal is to pursue for the true resistance so this i hope uh, every one of you has an idea about what is the apparent resistance and what is the true resistance and what uh, their application their pros and their cons in uh, agriculture i already put uh, the notes uh, in uh, this blog if you want some kind of written material it is already uh, there and you can go and download it i also uh, put it in the university portal and you can easily pick from there and if still you have problem we can uh, manage it okay 
सी यू लेटर बाय